This is a quick instructional video on the Telesystems camera. Uh, here, one of the important things is the focus. The top light is where we would be for like a face shot. And here we're going to go for the external shots through an Invisalign series, for example, with the arch, the face, uh, a smile shot, and then occlusal shots on the right and left. So the first thing I do is I set the focus here, and I come out to about the patient's knees, and notice how I'm holding the camera, so I can get a nice identification shot there. Okay, and I'm going to freeze the image, and it froze off to the left. And the idea here is we can get the image stabilized without having to know what we're capturing or see the preview of the capture, because we know that it's stable and we took the image. Now here for the smile shot, I'm behind the patient, and if I had the headrest, I could put my elbows on the headrest, but in general you're about a hand's width away from the patient. I like to hold the camera like this extra orally for the smile shot, where my fingers can get to the button. There you see the smile on the screen. Just froze that. Now it's nice and still, but notice by stabilizing on the headrest, having my finger on the capture button, in the correct distance, I'm able to get a nice smile shot and it's still. So distance-wise, I'm about a hand's width away from the upper lip. The top of the camera is just over the upper lip. I'm using the nose to bisect everything. When I turn around, I take an upper arch shot. The upper arch shot is easily as easily taken if you hold the hand on the chin and you create a resting point for the camera that is approximately an inch and a half out from the lower lip. Notice here, go ahead and open please, a little wider, and I'll, I'll connect my index or my uh, middle finger around where I can get to the button, but you'll see I'm able to stabilize there and look at the screen, got a nice upper arch shot, and I can then freeze that. And one technique is to ask the patient to keep their mouth open and smile. And notice it retracts the teeth from the upper arch so we can even get a more clear image. So here the technique for upper arch is straight down with the camera. I'm creating a hand hold on the chin and a place for the head of the camera to rest between my thumb and index finger. And then again, open a little wider please. Ask the patient to smile with their mouth open. Open and it pulls the, the lips away from the teeth. Lower arch, you simply flip around, and again I'm holding the camera here, and this time I'm going to use my thumb to capture. Go ahead and open, and notice where I'm at, I'm across from the upper lip. The, the camera is parallel in the patient's body. Look at the screen for that nice arch shot that we have there. And again, the camera is parallel in the patient's body. The tip of the upper, the camera tip is approximately an inch away from the upper lip, patient's opening, and then we can get a very nice arch shot. Now for the right and left shots here, go ahead and um, retract, and notice I can even do this where my thumb is here, and I'm going to get here with, with distance wise, and we would simply, if we had the retractors, cheek retractors, this would be an easier shot, but you can see how you could easily get that shot by retracting, and again while I'm doing that I always make sure that a finger is on the button, and here I'm able to stabilize, but again the, the retractors would make that shot much easier because you can see the upper and lower teeth there, but again if with cheek retractors you can see looking at the screen that you could easily get that shot uh, that they're asking for in the Invisalign. So those are the extra oral images, those were all taken with the camera on the top light. So any, anytime you're doing extra oral, make sure you, that you're on the top light. We're going to go inside the mouth, and for that, I'm going to adjust to the second light, which is the two to three tooth view. Now if you want to use a sheath for this, I recommend that you put the camera head straight down and push it all the way to the end of the sheath. Okay, peel the plastic off. I always like to take the plastic here, back it away a little bit at the tip, and press my thumb firmly down on the plastic because it will make it more clear and easier to see. 
Here for the two to three tooth view again, I like holding the patient's chin with my left hand and then the head of the camera between my thumb and index finger. And notice here, I'm going to put it on the incisal edge of the lower and I'm just going to tilt the camera up and you can see just from the incisal edge in that movement tilting and turning I'm able to see the entire upper arch so here's the posterior teeth I drop it down here's the anterior centrals now I'm able to see the entire arch upper and lower to two to three tooth view and I'm going to capture that image without actually putting the camera back in the patient's mouth so again when I'm holding that for the lower notice where my fingers are. I've got my middle finger on the capture button to make it really easy to capture when I need to. And I'm stabilizing with my left hand holding the neck of the camera between my thumb and index finger. So this is really how I'm holding the camera. If I were to look at the lower arch from a two to three tooth view, again hand on the chin, holding here. Here I'm fulcruming off of the upper incisal edge notice this, I can just tilt the camera down to see farther back. So notice, I tilt the camera down, I'm seeing the posterior teeth, and look at where the camera is placed. It's still on the anterior, resting on the incisal edge. Then I can simply capture that image, and notice when I freeze the image, I've got the camera really stable, so I know that I've captured the image that I want to capture. I would recommend if you have air, always drying the mouth off, prior to taking these types of shots, it makes it much easier. The next light is the one tooth view, and that's right in the middle. So if I want to ever get closer, I simply push down and that's going to take me closer in terms of getting closer to the tooth. Now when you're on a two to three tooth view, you're typically on the opposing arch. If I'm on a one tooth view and I'm wanting to look at teeth on the lower arch, notice here, I'm fulcruming on the lateral and you can see the image nice clear, I'm at the correct distance, and it makes it nice and easy for me to change. If I'm a little out of focus, I can get closer by just fulcruming. So notice here, here, this is how I'm controlling my distance, is just fulcruming on the same arch. Okay, and, and again, if I've got it set there and I run it along the same arch, you'll notice that keeps me at the correct distance where I'm in focus. I really don't have to change anything. So for one tooth, for anything one tooth and in, which these last two are macro or very magnified, you're going to be fulcruming on the same arch. Here, looking at the upper arch, I simply adjust my hand. And again, I find it easiest to hold like this. But notice now I'm fulcruming on the lateral of the upper arch. So here, that's keeping my one tooth distance that I need and I can always adjust until it's in ideal focus with just a little tilt. So notice there I'm correct distance away. If I were too close I just fulcrum out and I'm in at the correct distance. The next two focus settings so the fourth from the tip second light from the bottom is the beginning of macro and macro would be about a half of a tooth. So here I'm going to fulcrum again on the same arch. Or in the case of the anteriors here so you can get a little better idea. Notice how close, you can see how clear it is there. You can see the characterization on those teeth. But notice how close I am there. So whenever you're in macro mode, which is one of these last two lights, you're always fulcruming on the same arch. So here I'm going to get that magnified. You can see the wear facets there. And I'm actually closer, but simply fulcruming on the same arch. Lower, same thing. Here, notice how close I am there. Where Donna just had the root canal. And I'm going to freeze that. Now, the thing I want you to see is when I freeze that image, okay, there, there's no movement. I'm not moving my hand because, and the reason for that, is if you notice, here I'm able to stabilize, keep the camera very still with my left hand, holding it between my thumb and index finger, and then when I have it nice and clear, I don't move and I freeze the image with my right hand in the button. The final focus point, all the way down, is really, really close. So this would be your super macro. 
The only difference between that and macro is that you are fulcrum and you're closer to the tooth. Look how close I am now. You can see there I'm right on top. In fact, I'll go back to that for you. You see how I'm fulcrum right on top of that tooth. So if you have fracture lines, for example, that, that you want to transilluminate, that's a great, go ahead and open. We'll look at these anteriors, for example. And you can see how close you can get. You can actually transilluminate the enamel. If there's a fracture, it's really going to show up. See that vertical fracture there on that tooth? Well, we're practically touching the tooth with the lens. And notice on the interior my technique, so I can still freeze that image and maintain stability. I'm actually pressing against the tooth, and I'm using my index finger down below to capture. So the key is to always have your hands positioned properly where you can stabilize and you can then fulcrum. And just remember, uh, align everything extraorally with the nose and then intraorally on the lateral, if you're at a two to three tooth view, you're going to be on the opposing arch on the lateral. If you're a one tooth or macro, you'll be on the same arch on the lateral. When you take these sheaths off, push them up a little bit, there's a white tab here. You should be able just to work the sheath over the camera and peel it off and then all the germs are inside the sheet. Um, you can wipe the camera down. We recommend wiping the lens with alcohol and cleaning that. You don't want to saturate any of the side buttons, just a quick wipe with cabicide and that will do the trick. Okay, hopefully this helps and if you have any other questions please call us 800-672-5733. Thank you.